Welcome back to polynomials. In the last video we began to work through the cubic function in the top left corner of the screen. f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12. And using synthetic division we determined that one of our zeros is negative 4, which means one of our factors is x plus 4. Now what we want to do is continue to work through find all of the factors of this function so that we can then identify the zeros or the solutions for the function. So let's start by doing some additional synthetic division. This is actually not what I will in the end recommend, but let's see how we continue to work through synthetic division using trial and error to evaluate these other possible options. We've worked through negative 4. We've determined negative 4 is a 0. Previously we evaluated positive 4. We determined positive 4 was not a 0. Let's try negative 3. And my factors, my coefficients are 1, 2, negative 11, and negative 12. I carry down my first coefficient of 1. I multiply negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 is 24. Negative 12 plus 24 is 12, which is not 0. So we do not have one of our zeros. Let's try positive 3. Coefficients of 1, 2, negative 11, negative 12. Carry down our 1. Begin our multiplication process. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Negative 11 plus 15 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So we've now identified another one of our zeros. So I can continue to use this trial and error process until I've worked through to find all of my zeros. But there's an easier way if we go back to the left side of the screen. First, why are we using this process? Why don't we use this process when we're dealing with simpler functions such as linear equations or quadratic equations? And the answer is because we have simpler tools to use to evaluate those equations. In particular, let's think about evaluating quadratic equation. We can use manual factoring or completing the square or the quadratic formula to evaluate quadratic equations. We don't need to use this synthetic division concept. We could, but we have simpler tools to use, and so we use them. So let's see how we can now use simpler tools to find the remaining factors of the cubic looking at the left side of the screen. When I perform synthetic division with the value of negative 4, I ended up with the final value of 0, which is how I know that negative 4 is one of my zeros. Now what I can do is I can simply work with the remaining numbers, the remaining coefficients, to the left of the 0. And I have 3. 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And I can set these up as coefficients of x is one degree lower than what I what I began with. I began with the degree of three, x cubed. And now I can, instead of working with four numbers, the coefficients of x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant, I'm going to work with these three numbers as coefficients one degree lower of x squared, x, and a constant. So one 1x squared, minus 2, minus 2x, and minus 3, minus 3. Now I have a quadratic equation that I'll set equal to 0. And this will be much easier for me to solve because I know how to work with quadratic equations. And in this case, I can factor this quadratic manually. x and x looking at the constant of 3 and the sign negative. I need two factors of negative 3 that subtract to my 
middle value coefficient of negative 2. Those are negative 3 and positive 1. And now I know my remaining two zeros. The factor of x minus 3 gives me a zero of 3, and the factor of x plus 1 gives me a zero of negative 1. And now we can complete our analysis if we are asked to find the factors of the function. We previously identified minus 4 as a 0, so we know one of our factors is x plus 4. And now in evaluating the quadratic based on what's left from our synthetic division, we've identified two other factors x minus 3 and x plus 1. And if we're asked to find the solutions or the zeros, then these values are negative 4, 3, and negative 1. So now we have identified the factors. We fully factorized this cubic function. And we've also identified the solutions. We've identified all solutions of this cubic function. Now let's work through an example from an actual past IGCSE paper from the 0606 additional math exam. And this comes from the March 2017 0606 paper. We're given the function p of x equals x to the power of 4 minus 2x to the power of 3 minus 3x to the power of 2 plus 8x minus 4. And we have a two-part question. Part 1 states, show that the function can be written as x minus 1, as one factor, times x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now there's more than one way to approach this problem. One way is we could start with the original function, apply synthetic division using the value of 1, and then arrive at the coefficients for the power of 3, the power of 2, the power of 1, and the constant. Another possibility is simply to multiply. Let's expand these two factors. So I'm going to multiply x by all of the terms of the second factor and then minus 1 by all of the terms of the second factor. So I can expand to x times x cubed is x to the power of 4 minus x times x squared is x to the power of 3 minus x times 4x is minus 4x squared plus x times 4 is 4x and now multiplying negative 1 times x cubed minus x cubed. Negative 1 times negative x squared is plus 1x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4x is plus 4x. And negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And when I add, my result is x to the power of 4 minus 2x to the power of 3 minus 3x to the power of 2 plus 8x minus 4 which is the same as the given quartic function. And in part 2 we're asked to fully factorize the function. We know one of the factors is x minus 1 and now what we're left to work with is x to the power of 3 minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's this second factor that I want to fully factorize. And so I'm going to set up synthetic division. The coefficients are 1, negative 1, negative 4, and positive 4. Now I want to identify the 
factors that I'm evaluating. So I'll look at my constant, the value of 4, and I'll take the positive and negative factors of 4. So plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4. Now we know that one of the factors of the function is x minus 1, thus one of the zeros is 1, but that doesn't mean we can't have x minus 1 as a factor again. So I want to keep open the possibility of another x minus 1 factor. So now I need to decide which factor I want to begin with for evaluation. And generally a good idea is to begin with the smaller values. So I'm going to select negative 1 for evaluation. What I'm considering here as a possible factor is x plus 1. So I'll set up my synthetic division. I'll bring my first coefficient down. I'll begin my multiplication. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, which is obviously not 0. So negative 1 isn't one of my zeros. x plus 1 is not one of my factors. Let's try another one. Let's try 2. So now I'm evaluating the factor of x minus 2. Again, my coefficients are 1, negative 1, negative 4, and 4. I bring my first coefficient down. I begin my multiplication. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And 4 plus negative 4 is 0. So this is one of my zeros. 2 is one of my zeros. So I've identified a second factor, which is x minus 2. Additionally, now I can work with three coefficients and create the quadratic equation to work with, which will be easier for me to work with than continuing with the synthetic division. So now I'm going to analyze x squared with a coefficient of 1 and x with a coefficient of 1, positive and my constant of negative 2 equals 0 and I can manually factor x squared factors to x and x negative 2 I know that I want factors of 2 that subtract because of the negative sign factors that subtract to the coefficient of the middle value positive 1 and these are going to be plus 2 and minus 1 and my solutions are for just this component of the analysis this isn't this isn't the complete solutions but for this quad this quadratic component the solutions are negative 2 and positive 1 and now i have all of the solutions for the original function the solutions are 1 which we know is a solution because we were given one of the factors as x minus 1 we've now calculated 2 as a 0, which means a factor is x minus 2. And in our final analysis, analyzing the quadratic equation, we've identified two more zeros, negative 2 and 1. Thus, the two factors are x plus 2 and x minus 1. And the question asks for the factors of the function. So the factors of the function are my original x minus 1, which was given to me in the question. And I've identified in my second synthetic division that 2 is a 0, so I have a factor of x minus 2. And now in evaluating my quadratic, I've identified two more. Well, I've calculated the zeros. I can go up one line, and I can see directly what my two factors are, x plus 2 
and x minus 1. So these are my four factors. I could simplify in one more step to write this as x minus 1. Notice I have two x minus 1s. So I could write x minus 1 squared times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Although either of these formats in the final row would be acceptable as a, an accurate and complete solution to fully factorizing the original function x to the power of 4 minus 2x to the power of 3 minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 4. And again, this problem comes from IGCSE paper for 0606, paper number 22, from March 2017. This concludes our lesson on polynomials. Be sure to, as always, practice these concepts with exercises from your textbook, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.